Now, Varsha is saying that, hey, you have taken uh, my room's key. Please release that. Harsha is saying, no, you have taken my key. You first release. And both of them are not willing to give the keys to each other first. So this was the command that we ran. So there's a full thread dump. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my channel, Code With Ease by Varsha. Today, we are going to talk about deadlock, a very important concept in Java related to threads and multi-threading. We are not only going to see the interview questions related to deadlock, but we are going to cover from scratch what exactly is deadlock. We are going to see how can we implement a deadlock using code, Java code. And we'll see the different interview questions that gets asked because it is important to know what are the conditions under which deadlock happens. Uh, how can you in real time detect or identify that a deadlock has happened? How can you resolve deadlock? So these are some of the practical questions related to deadlock which anybody should be able to know when they talk about deadlock. So these are the things we will cover in this session. So stay tuned and let's begin. So the first question is, what is deadlock? So, people, so this is to set the stage that what exactly deadlock mean. In simple words, I would say deadlock is some kind of an infinite loop where resources or people are getting stuck forever. Why they're stuck? Because they're waiting for each other to do something. So deadlock is a situation in the multi-threading. Whenever there are more threads involved, so the threads are blocked forever because they're waiting for each other to release the resource. So there is a thread called T1. T1 is waiting for T2 to release a resource. And on the same time, T2 is also waiting for T1 to release. So in order for T in order for T1 to get the resource, it is waiting on T2. And T2 is saying, no, I want the resource. Now, if I want to give you the resource, first you have to give me the resource. So a given analogy is two cars are stuck at an intersection. These are the two cars. Both of them want to move forward. But there is no sideways. So there's C1 and C2. So if C1 wants to move forward, C2 has to move. Now C2 is saying, if I have to move, I cannot go back. I have to go forward. So both are stuck in a deadlock. So we are going to see via code, how can we implement this kind of a situation? What we are going to do is we are going to make it very easy. We are going to take example of two sisters. So I have taken a very real world example. Like suppose there are two sisters called Varsha and Harsha. What they have done is they are having some kind of a fight and Varsha has acquired the key of Harsha's room. So I'll just write it as key H. So Varsha has acquired the key of the room of Harsha and Harsha has acquired the key of Varsha, Varsha's room. So this is what they have done. And then now they're saying, now Varsha is saying that, hey, you have taken uh, my room's key, please release that. Harsha is saying, no, you have taken my key, you first release. And both of them are not willing to give the keys to each other first. If Varsha has surrendered the key to Harsha, Harsha would have also given the key back to Varsha and both would be unlocked. But because none of them are willing to release, so Varsha is waiting on Harsha to release the key. Harsha is waiting for Varsha to release the key. So this is the deadlock that we are going to write the code for in Java. Now, what this means is the second point which I want to highlight. Multiple threads need the same logs, but they obtain them in different order. So, Varsha's thread, what did she do? She took key of Harsha first. And Harsha took Varsha's key first. Okay. Now, Varsha is waiting for her key. And Harsha is waiting for her key. So, can you see the order is different? First, Varsha takes Harsha's key and then she is waiting for Varsha's, her own key. Then Harsha is taking Varsha's key and then she is waiting for her own key. If the order was opposite, <laughs> if the order was opposite, there wouldn't have been any deadlock because if Varsha had not, had taken Harsha's key and Harsha would have not, wouldn't have taken Varsha's key, no, no deadlock, no situation of any argument, only because both of them have exchanged, like taken each other's key and now they're waiting for their own key is this kind of a strife or a conflict or a deadlock has occurred. So this is what we're going to write the code for. And then we are, of course, going to see how can we prevent it, resolve it, see the conditions for deadlock and all of that. So let's start with the code changes. So we are basically going to implement the same deadlock of the situation we just tried to understand about two sisters, two locks. So let's try to create the objects for the two locks, denoting the two locks, that is, we'll call it like Varsha's key and Harsha key. We'll create the threads now. We'll call it simple like thread for Varsha. So if uh, you are new to this, like, so as I said earlier also that uh, creation of threads, how do we do it? And what is the most recent way of doing all of that? I've already covered in the multi-threading playlist. So do watch it out. And this is the most latest way of creating threads. We don't create a class and have that class implement runnable. We can also replace this part with a Lambda function so that we don't have to see the run method being operated. We can just write our logic within this. So first is we'll have a synchronized block where we're going to acquire, Varsha is acquiring the lock of Harsha's key. So she is just grabbing that and we'll print that out that Varsha has acquired Harsha's key. Right? After that, we'll make Varsha's thread go for a sleep of, let's say, three seconds. 
and notice one more thing that within the same synchronized block that i have written within this only there should be another acquiring of the log so we are also going to see that in the condition slide of deadlock that there should be hold and wait condition where you are holding one log varsha is holding harsha key log and then you are trying to acquire another log so hold and wait wait is a important condition for a deadlock to happen so she is holding the key for varsha and at the same time she wants the key of varsha as well she is not releasing the varsha key if she would have released it should have the logic should have occurred outside the synchronized block after the lock has been released so now she is trying to acquire and that is the reason why the deadlock is being caused right so here here we'll just add one more sys out that varsha has got her key we are going to copy the same code change the names and we are going to do this same for harsha as well just swap the variables so now harsha is getting varsha key i'll just rename it okay so now we need to start both the threads so let's try to run this So Varsha has acquired Harsha's key, and Harsha has acquired Varsha's key. These two are done, and we see that the program is still running. Let me add one more sys out that they have slept and they have woken up, so that it is clean. So I'll just add a sys out Varsha sleeping for three seconds, and after this she has woken up, and the same I'm going to do for Harsha's. Cool. So let's rerun this. So Harsha has acquired Harsha's key. She is sleeping for three seconds. Harsha has acquired the key. Harsha slept. Now again, after three seconds, Harsha woke up. Harsha also woke up. Now you see that the thread is still running. The process is still running. Both the threads are still running. It is not terminated. Now there is an interesting way to detect a deadlock. Of course, we can keep a program running, and when we don't see an output, it is stuck. In an ID environment, it is easier. But in a large scale production environment, when you have loads of different, when you have multiple programs running, how do you detect? if a deadlock has occurred so there are a couple of command line utilities there are also gui tools in ids so this is a very good article which uh, i will link in the description below so we are going to see a demo of two different tools that we can use to detect a deadlock after detecting a deadlock we'll also going to see that how can we solve the deadlock in this case so in order to detect a deadlock let us first try to Take a, take this terminal and try to run our program. So we can just fire the program from the terminal itself. So here is the output that we have already seen on the IntelliJ. Now what we are going to do is we'll let this run and we'll take another fresh terminal. In that we are going to print the process. So here we say we get the PID, the process ID where this is running. So what we will do, we'll use a command line utility. There are two of them. First is a, called JCMD. over here we will just have to give the pid that we have and then we have to call this method called thread dot print and you can see that it's a pretty verbose output that we get so i'll just start from the beginning so this was the command that we ran so there's a full thread dump see at last if you see we have already seen that there is a found one deadlock this is the java stack information for all the threads like thread 0 and thread 1 which we have named as varsha and harsha so waiting to lock this it has already locked a certain object here it is little prescriptive that found one java level deadlock thread 0 is waiting to lock this monitor but it is being held by thread 1 thread 1 is waiting to lock this monitor but this is being held by thread 0 so very clearly the dump has been given apart from that there are uh, even more information so this is something which we can try it out in the uh, in the local but this doesn't work that you fire it up and your remote process uh, on the server where your java program is running this utility might not be that much helpful there is one more command that we use that is called j stack and wherein you just have to give the process id similarly even that is going to give you the thread dump information i'm going to link a article in the description below which covers all different gui tools also uh, of checking how the thread dump works so i think that is going to be helpful so this is one of the interesting way in which you can detect if a deadlock has happened for your program and now let's try to understand what are the conditions for deadlock So now let's talk about what are the conditions that can lead to late deadlock. There are four main conditions which has to be satisfied if a deadlock has to happen. So these are the conditions. First is mutual exclusion. So there can be only one thread which can access one resource at a time. So next is there can be next is hold and wait. So the thread will hold the lock and it will wait for another. So hold and wait kind of a scenario has to happen. It's not like it will hold and release and then wait. third is no preemption which means resources can be released only by the thread holding them there should be no interruption if there is an interruption obviously there cannot be any deadlock 
when varsha and harsha were fighting for the keys for example if their mom the mother had come and interrupted them and tried to resolve the deadlock then uh, if the mom would have come and interrupted and snatched the keys and given the keys to each other their own respective keys then this kind of a deadlock wouldn't have happened but then the the kind of a condition is that it is not happening both of them trying to wait for the same resource so there is there should not be any interruption as such if they are interrupted or if they are preempted there cannot be any deadlock finally circular wait set of threads waiting for each other in a circular chain like i said so varsha was waiting for harsha's key to be released and harsha is waiting for varsha's key to be released so this is the circular wait for which so these are the four conditions which has to be satisfied for a deadlock to occur so we have seen earlier that how do we detect a deadlock we use the thread dump analysis apart from that we can use some tools like j console and visual vm uh, there are deadlock detection tools in ides also and now let's talk about how do we resolve a deadlock so now that a deadlock has happened how can we resolve it like it is more of like a prevention technique so these are the four points we should avoid nested locks remember in the synchronized block while the block was uh, within the block we tried to write another synchronized block so it was a lock within lock kind of a nested lock situation but this is the condition for deadlock for deadlock to happen the biggest uh, main the biggest pain point the biggest condition for deadlock to happen is a hold and wait kind of a situation where you are holding a lock and then you're trying to acquire another lock so this is what is being pointed by nested lock so you should avoid that second is the time out when you're trying to attempt to acquire locks that uh, if you're trying to acquire a lock after a certain uh, after a certain time interval it should get automatically released then is lock ordering so as we were take, saying that when varsha was trying to acquire she was acquiring first the harsha ski and then the varsha ski and uh, when harsha was trying to acquire she was doing in the reverse order she was asking for varsha ski and then harsha ski as per the code now if we change the order the simplest way is in that way the deadlock can be resolved then we can use concurrent packages uh, there is a method called try lock unlock we can use uh, we are not going to cover that in this because concurrent rela concurrency related coding questions will start afresh uh in one of the videos so from that we are going to cover everything we might have a reference to this question later on when we are trying to do that so if you go to the question that we were seeing so over here if i just try to reverse the order of the locks so here if i say that okay harsha's key and then varsha's key okay same as this harsha's key and varsha's key then harsha's key and varsha's now the lock order is same now if i try to run this now the deadlock should not happen so let's see so varsha has acquired the key she is sleeping for 3 seconds she woke up varsha has got her key harsha has acquired the varsha's key and harsha is sleeping for 3 seconds woke up so we see that once varsha woke up she got her key as well so if i run this couple of more times we should be able to see not a deadlock so just by changing the lock ordering we are able to we are able to prevent the deadlock because when varsha woke up she could easily grab the keys because it was not locked by harsha so this is what we wanted to cover as part of this session where we talked about what is deadlock we saw an example we did a live code demo we also understood how do we detect a deadlock how do we prevent a deadlock most importantly we also talked about what are the conditions that has to happen for a deadlock to occur so thank you so much for watching